السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the introduction to human anatomy lectures or general anatomy lectures I'm gonna talk today about the digestive system I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansour University The objectives of my presentation is about the following First, we will discuss the components of the digestive system the digestive tract and the accessory digestive organs and then we will talk about the principal functions of the digestive system. For the digestive system, it consists of the following the digestive tract. It starts with the mouth, then the pharynx, then the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and then the large intestine. While the accessory digestive organs, they are the teeth, the tongue, the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. We start first with the mouth, two things in the mouth, something called the oral cavity, which is bounded externally by the lips and cheeks, and another place in the mouth is called the vestibule. It's like a pocket or a space between the lips or cheeks and the teeth. The mouth is separated from the nasal cavity by the roof of the mouth. So this is the roof of the mouth or it's called the palate. It's formed of two parts. The hard palate is made of skull bones, so it is hard. And a soft palate at the very posterior end of the palate is called the soft palate, and it is made of muscle. In the middle, we have um, a finger like projection extending from the soft palate, it is called the uvula. Uh, for the teeth, in the adult, we have 32 teeth. Uh, in each one half of each jaw, we have two incisors central incisor and lateral incisor and then we have one canine and we have two premolars first and second premolars and then we have the three molars for crushing first second and third the third one is called the wisdom tooth in the babies we have what's called deciduous teeth or temporary teeth or milk teeth they are 20 in number in each one half of each row, we have the following teeth. We have the incisors, central and lateral, and one canine, and just the two molars, first and second. The tongue, it's a muscular organ covered by mucous membrane. Frenulum, it is a fold of mucous membrane attaches uh, the undersurface of the tongue to the floor of the mouth. Uh, on the dorsal surface of the tongue, the part that faces the hard palate, it is rough, filled with projections. It's called papillae. Uh, they lie here on the dorsal surface of the tongue. Some of them contain the taste receptors or taste buds. Also inside the mouth, uh, we can see the main uh, salivary glands, three pairs of salivary glands, three on the right side and three on the left side. The largest one is called the parotid gland. Uh, another one lies under the mandible, it's called the submandibular gland. And another one lies under the tongue, so it is called the sublingual gland. Uh, the salivary glands secrete saliva. They contain bicarbonates and other sorts of enzymes. Uh, and their function is to begin the process of digestion of starch. If we talk a little bit about each one, the parotid glands uh, they are the largest salivary glands here. You can see the parotid glands here. They lie anterior and somewhat inferior to the ears. And their ducts open into the vestibule of the mouth. So this is the vestibule. This place is called again the vestibule. And you can see here the opening of the uh, parotid duct opposite the upper second molar tooth. The sublingual glands, uh, from their name, they lie beneath or below the tongue. That's why they are called the sublingual glands. Each one has many ducts. And uh, also we have another gland here lies close to the mandible. Here under the mandible, it's called the submandibular glands. They lie on the floor of the mouth, uh, on the medial surface of the mandible. And also each one has a single duct. Both 
uh, the sublingual uh, ducts and the submandibular duct open under the surface of the tongue into the oral cavity. Uh, the pharynx is a muscular tube and it's formed of three parts here. It extends from the base of the skull down uh, to the last or six cervical vertebrae. The first part of the pharynx lies behind the nasal cavity, so it is called the nasopharynx, this area. And the second part lies behind the oral cavity, so it is called the oropharynx. And the third part lies behind the larynx, that's why it's called the laryngopharynx. Uh, the pharynx acts as a passage for the air, and also a passage for the food. So it's a common passage for both the digestive system and the respiratory system. So in order for the food not to get into the respiratory system, it is guarded here by part of the larynx, which is called the maybe glottis, in which slides backward to close the larynx during a swallowing of the food. There is no digestion of food takes place into the pharynx, just it is a passage for both air and food. Uh, next we have the esophagus. It is a muscular tube. Extends from the end of the pharynx down to the beginning of the stomach. So it passes both inside the thoracic cavity and also part of it lies inside the abdominal cavity. It's rhythmic contraction called prestalysis, which pushes the food along it to the rest of the alimentary canal. So this is the esophagus, it contracts uh, above the polus of food to push it downward into the stomach. Next we have the stomach. It is a thick walled uh, muscular organ, looks like the letter J. It lies on the left side of the abdominal cavity deep to the liver and the diaphragm. It's continuous with the esophagus above and of course, a continuous with the small intestine below. So what's about the function of the stomach? The stomach acts like a reservoir uh, of food, where the food is mixed inside it. Uh, the start of digestion of proteins and fat occurs there. Uh, because of the acidity of the stomach, it activates some enzymes. Also, it destroys some bacteria and makes uh, the intrinsic factor that is important for, for P12 uh, absorption. It absorbs uh, the alcohol and water. Uh, the small intestine extends from the pyloric sphincter or the end of the stomach to the ileocecal valve or the beginning of the cecum. It is divided into the following regions. Judenum, here, the upper 25 centimeters or 12 inches of the small intestine is called the duodenum. Then we have the jejunum, and finally we have the ileum. Uh, for the duodenum, it is a C-shaped tubular organ, measures about 25 centimeters or 12 inches, and extends from the pyloric sphincter of the stomach to the beginning of the next part of the small intestine which is called the jejunum. So it receives bile secretions that come from the liver and the gallbladder here. The bile is formed inside the liver, stored inside the gallbladder and entered uh, through the common bile duct into the duodenum. Also it receives pancreatic secretions that come from the pancreas through the main uh, pancreatic duct. Uh, then the next part of the small intestine that follows the duodenum is called the duodenum. It extends from the duodenum to the beginning of the ileum. It forms about the proximal two-fifths of the small intestine. It has slightly larger lumen than the ileum and more mucosal folds. Also, the arterial supply of the duodenum here it forms less branching and less arterial arcades and has long vessels and we call it vasa recta compared to the ileum and this is part of the ileum it has a narrower lumen than the uh, jejunum less mucosal folds more arterial arcades and shorter vasa recta 
the last region of the small intestine is called the ileum. It forms the distal three-fifths of the small intestine. The terminal portion or part of the ileum enters into the medial end of the beginning of the large intestine, which is called the cecum, through a valve, and this is called the ileocecal valve. Inside the wall of the ileum, we have special aggregation of lymphoid tissue. It's called uh, pears, patches. They are abundant. We can see them here at the wall of the ileum. For the large intestine, it's about one and a half meters in length. Uh, it begins at the lower right quadrant of the abdomen, ascends upward till it reaches the liver and then cross the abdomen from right to left till it reaches the spleen and then descends downwards into the pelvis and finally uh, terminates at the anus. So the different regions of the large intestine are as follows. We have the cecum, a uh, finger-like extension out of it is called the appendix. Then we have the colon divided into the following ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid or pelvic colon, rectum, and ends at the anal canal. The large intestine differs from the small intestine in the following. Besides, of course, it has a larger lumen and a shorter length. From inside, it has nubili like the small intestine and their mucosa. The smooth muscles of the large intestine arrange in long pants at its outer wall. They are called tinea coli. We cannot see this uh, on the wall of the small intestine. Also, uh, in the large intestine, there is circulations or hosterations, uh, while in the small intestine, there is no hosteration or circulations. Also, in the uh, large intestine, you can see uh, extensions from the peritoneum filled with fat. It is called epiplike appendages. So, what's the function of the large intestine? It receives the undigested food from the small intestine. It absorbs water and the electrolytes. Uh, from this undigested food and transform it into a solid uh, material. It's called the feces or fecal materials and passes it out of the GIT in the process which is called defecation. For the liver, which is one of the accessory uh, digestive organs, it is the largest gland in the body. It lies in the upper right part of the abdomen and form it of four loops. Two of them you can see them from the front the right loop and the left loop and two small loops you can see them from behind so we have right loop left loop also two small loops codate and quadrate loops and the liver perform many many functions over 500 functions in the body some of these functions like formation of bile detoxification or removal of uh, drugs or alcohol also it stores Glycogen, uh, vitamin A, D, E, K, or fat soluble vitamins, iron, and other minerals, and also stores cholesterol. Also, it activates vitamin D, produce or form RPCs in the fetus, phagocytosis, metabolizes absorbed food molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. The second organ here is the gallbladder, which is a hack like organ attached to the inferior surface of the liver. It stores and concentrates bile. Then, from its duct, it expels this concentrated bile into what is called the common bile duct, which opens into the GD. Bile is a yellowish green fluid that emulsifies. The last organ I'm going to talk about is the pancreas. It is a soft lobulated organ and lies across the posterior abdominal wall. Uh, the pancreas is a mixed gland, both endocrine and exocrine. Its endocrine function through groups of cells called the pancreatic islets or islets of Langerhans. They secrete insulin and glucagon into the blood. The exocrine 
parts of the gland uh, secretes a pancreatic juice through the pancreatic duct which opens again into the duodenum. This diagram summarizes the overall function of the GIT. First, we ingest the food through our mouth. Um, inside the mouth, there is mechanical digestion or the start of the mechanical digestion. And then chemical digestion. Then absorption of food takes place. Uh, then the undigested food will move into the uh, large intestine where they are transformed into solid materials by reabsorption of uh, uh, water from this undigested food and formation of fecal uh, materials and then excretion or defecation takes place through the rectum and anal canal. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share and do not forget to hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video.